Charles is hearing voices, he's having visions, they're all turning out to be true. He really is a prophet, and he really can hear God's voice, and then he has a vision of who his wife will be. And he goes to a meeting, he's a keynote speaker, and there is a woman there that is the exact person he saw in his vision of who his wife is going to be. And uh, uh, Burl, you were a politician, so you were seated with the speakers and the, and the celebrities. And uh, he gave you a prophetic word when he first saw you. What was that word? Well, the first thing out of his mouth was that um, he saw me involved in the governmental arena. And in fact, he said, I see you flying on the plane with the President of the United States of America. You will be flying on Air Force One. And people will ask why, and God said that you're my handmaiden, and I handpicked you to be with the president. And what did you think? I thought, oh, that's a false prophet. N now, why didn't you just say, you're supposed to be my wife, come to your senses, what's the matter with you, Charles? Because you don't use the prophetic word to manipulate people. Of course, but if, I don't know whether I could have held that back if I... I was struggling, <laughs> but I'm a mature <laughs> prophet, and I've been in the ministry for so long, so are you, it's the time, if God speaks okay. something to you, the time uh, will come yeah, to Yeah, but pass. she thinks you're a false prophet. Yeah. So then, how did it happen that you gave her three prophecies. Mm -hmm. Explain that. Okay. One, the, one, within two weeks that she was going to fly on the Air Force, she received a phone call from the White House. Really? I did. Actually, within the two-week period after receiving the word and me calling him a false prophet, I had a call from the White House and they said the President would invite you to fly on Air Force One with him. Um, this is the location you would meet him if you accept and you will fly out of the country with the President and meet with the President of another country. So you immediately probably thought this guy uh, is a real prophet. Well, actually, at first I thought my staff was playing a joke on me because they heard of the prophecy. Oh, I see. So I did not return a call to the White House. And um, <laughs> after the second call, um, they wanted to know if I was going to respond. My staff said, we're not playing a joke. This is very serious. So I had them contact the White House and everything was arranged. And it was exactly as prophesied to me. Okay. When did you tell her that you, she's supposed to be your wife or did you never no i told her after we became friends she was doing business uh, a business for me because she's a lawyer mm -hmm. and god told her to do some legal things for me and then we became friends so after a period of uh, four five six months and uh, one day we went for lunch and she asked me because Barry was very plain what is your intention what, uh, do, you know what, you were interested in marrying him, right? No, I was not interested in him at all. So <laughs> I wanted to make sure <laughs> she that told me I was he not understood <laughs> that whatever relationship we had was purely professional and that God had only asked me to assist him legally. And, and most of the time when I was meeting different men traveling around the world, I would find that they would be interested after a period of time. I wanted to ensure up front that that would not be his intention because I would not um, agree, acquiesce at all. Okay, so she tells you this good news, yeah. and uh, what do you do about it? I told her that uh, 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 I, like, I'm interested in her, and she told me point blank, you are not my type. Why? Because you're too short. I never <laughs> knew I was short until I met Beryl. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so how did you get to be man and wife? <laughs> Eventually, I told her she was resisting, but then I, I, I asked her, I said, Bera, would you do whatever God tells you to do? She said, yes. Then I hung the phone out. She called me and said, why did you ask me that question? I said, three things are going to happen. You're going to have a dream. In the dream, we're going to be married, and I described the dream. You're going to be sitting on the edge of your bed, and you're going to be planning our wedding. And the third thing is that you are going to be driving your black Mercedes Benz, and guess what? You're going to stop and be making wedding plans. Every time and, she and had be making what wedding plans for our wedding. Wed oh, okay. Wedding so she plans. laughed. She said, "Wait a minute, this thing is never going to happen." When she had the first dream, and when she had the dream that we're getting married, early in the morning she was having breakfast. I called her. I said, "Oh, last night you had the dream, eh?" Wait, wait, wait a second. How did you know that she had that dream last night? Because prophets download information from God. That's good enough for me. What, what, what about you? What did you think? 
you're having breakfast, you're minding your own business, you've had this dream, and he's on the other end of the phone, and he's not your type. Well, I decided <laughs> that was only one. He said three, so I was still good. There oh, were two okay. more things that needed to happen, and I did not believe they would happen. And? The second, um, dream, the second event occurred that he mentioned to me, and um, he called after the second event. By then, I was crying. I said, God, you, you can't do this to me. You said you would give me the desires of my heart, and this is not my desire. And then the third thing happened, and he called again. Of course, I mean, I'm a wise woman. I would never call him and tell him they happened. I didn't want this in the beginning. The third thing happened. I was prostrate before the Lord in tears. And, and God finally spoke to me, and he said, this is not about you. This is about the kingdom. This is about my work. And you are a very small, a minute part of this entire picture. I just hand-selected you for this because I want to use you in the gift, in the anointing. And yet, when you, be, when you became man and wife, there was something about the presence of God for the prophecy on him that jumped on you. Absolutely. The Bible says that the two become one flesh. And, and, and he explained that to me. In fact, when he married me, he said that I release the gift, the anointing that's in my life upon you.